Hi, I'm Christy Irvin Johnson, and I want to welcome you to today's More Victorious Living. I have so enjoyed coming and being with you through these videos this year. I hope that you've been encouraged, that you've been inspired, that you've been empowered, and that you have been reminded of how much God loves you. Together, we have dove into the Word of God. We've, we've done some series together. We've been to the Holy Land together. And today, I wanted to remind you that God is inviting us every single day to come and to learn from Him. I know it's the holiday season, and I cannot even imagine how difficult that is for you, knowing that your family or your friends are gathered around a table and they are experiencing your favorite foods. Um, I imagine that this would be a difficult time. Well, today I wanted to talk about the table that God invites us to come to every single day of the year, not just at Christmas, but every single day for us to come and to taste and to see how good He is. And when we taste of Him, we are filled up. We are um, to the point of overflow. You know, um, I had the opportunity to go into the jail here in North Carolina every week. And today, because it's close to Christmas, I got to carry some special treats in. I was able to carry in um, subs and potato salad and some other things. It was a real treat uh, for all of us. I sat and ate with them as well. But I was, I was laughing, we were all laughing because they had just eaten before I got there. Uh, some of them had just come from the cafeteria and had had two plates. And the rule was whatever I brought, they had to eat it all. And uh, they weren't allowed to save it or put it over in their mattress or anything. And so these guys, they ate and they ate and they just couldn't eat anymore. And there was more than they could take in. And they were just shaking their hand. They're like, we cannot believe that we're sending these cookies back with you because it was such a treat. And we were laughing because I said, you know, really, guys, this is what it's like with the Lord. We come, we can eat, we can eat, and we can eat, and we can't possibly take it all in. But every time we come to the table and we meet with Him, uh, not only does He fill us up, but He fills us up with good things, things that delight us. I watched this man today eat some potato salad, and he was moaning, and he's like, this is the best potato salad. And I thought, you know how good that is? It doesn't even compare to the potato salad that's in here, to the fruit salad that's in here, to the meat and the potatoes and all these things that are in the Word of God. And so today I wanted to share a parable with you that Jesus shared to people about a feast that he was having or that it, it, the king was having and how the king was inviting all these people to come to the table, to sit there and to celebrate with him, to enjoy a feast. The banquet was ready and he was opening up the gates of the palace and he was inviting people to come in. But the problem is no one would accept his invitation. And so in Luke 14, uh, verse 15 uh, this is what happens. This man says to Jesus, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. And so Jesus replies with the parable, with the story. And he says, a man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. And when the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guest, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I just bought a field and I need to go inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen. Please excuse me. Finally, the other one said, I now have a wife, so I can't come. Always blame it on the wife, you know. Anyway, the servant returned and told his master what they had said, and his master was furious. And he said, go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And after the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you can find to come so that the house would be full. For none of those that I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. What Jesus was saying here is that he has sent out an invitation 
first to his people, to the Jewish people, those the relig religious leaders that were sitting there, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the countrymen there. And he was saying, you know, there is this feast for you. There is this banquet that has been prepared for you by God. And he is inviting you to come and to have a meal with his son and to enjoy this fellowship with the father, but you're not coming. And so he says, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go out and I'm going to invite the Gentiles. I'm going to invite the other people um, and, and people, the lame, those that the society would think are outcasts and aren't deserving to come to a banquet. That's what Jesus is saying. He says, oh, go out there and for the whosoevers, which is what John 3, 16 says, that Jesus has come for the whosoevers. And I don't know about you, but that is some good news to me that God has come for the broken. He has come for those that um, feel like they can't see. They, they don't even know which direction to go. They can't even get themselves up and walk because maybe they're lame in their emotions or they, they're frustrated or they're outcasts. They've been tossed aside, forgotten about. And society says, you stay over there. You're not welcomed. And what Jesus says is, oh, there's room at the table. And I want to encourage you today, there's room at the table for you. It says there's still room. And God wants to fill up his house. And he chooses the things and the people that this world would say, you know what? That person's not educated. That person's not got any giftings or any resources in the natural. Um, he would choose someone like Moses, who was a stutterer, to be the mouthpiece for the people of God. God chooses you and me to come to his table, to learn from him, to sit with him, to enjoy and feast on the relationship that we can have with him. And those are the, there's so much that he wants to give us. But so often we don't feel like we're worthy to come to the banquet. We don't feel like we got the right suit, dress, attire. We don't look good enough. We don't smell good enough. And God's saying, I'm not asking you to clean up. I'm just asking you to come. I'm asking for the whosoever's to come into my house, to sit at the table with me. And I wrote down here to sup and to sit. You know, this day and age, it's, it's all about fast food. It's about going to a vending machine or the commissary. It's for me yesterday. I caught myself. I do this all the time just walking around eating a salad through the house or I'll walk around the house brushing my teeth because I'm trying to do things and, and just sitting, sometimes I think it's just wasted time. And that's not how it it should be and it's certainly not how it was in the Jewish customs. I just went to Israel. You guys traveled that journey with me through the videos. And one thing that past, that Rabbi Jason taught us and one thing that we did every night was sit around an incredible meal every lunch and every night and breakfast. They were huge meals and it was all about sitting and supping and listening and talking and celebrating. These were drawn out affairs. It wasn't a rush thing. And so all throughout the Bible, you see Jesus sitting with people, talking with them, laughing with them. What was the last thing that he did before he was hauled off to go to the cross? He sat and he supped with his friends. He sat and he ate with them and he taught them and he encouraged them. And then he, he got down on his knees and he served them. Even the one that was getting ready to betray him, God welcomes everybody to the table. And you see throughout the Bible where Jesus would eat a meal and one verse says, oh, let me see if I can find it here. It was like Matthew 9, I think 10 through 17, the Pharisees and the Sadducees looked at Jesus and they're like, you eat with drunkards, you eat with tax collectors, you eat with, and it says scum, <laughs> the scum. And that's what the version in the New Living Translation said in my Bible. And I was like, man, the religious people were looking at those people who were hurting, who Jesus took the time for, that were sitting around the table with him. And then this lady comes in and she falls at his feet at the table and starts washing his feet with her hair and her tears. 
and opens up a bottle of um, an alabaster box of this beautiful, costly perfume and pours it out on his feet. And people around and the religious people got mad. They're like, if you knew who was at your table, if you knew who was kneeling down here by your feet, you would get up and you would leave this place. And he's like, the son of man didn't come to be a doctor for those that are healthy. He didn't come to seek and to save the healthy. He came to seek and to save those which are lost. He came to love on the broken. He came to set the captive free. He came to make whole the pieces, the people that had been shattered in their life. He came for the tax collector, the one who was being dishonest, who was robbing people, who had betrayed somebody. Um, he had come for the adulterer. He had come for the murderer. He had come for the leper and the lame, and he's inviting them to the table. So now let's talk about, I wish y'all could see this little thing that I drew. It, Y'all, it, my art skills are so bad. But this is a picture of a table. Let me see if you can see this. It's a picture of a table. And these are seats. And at the head of the table is God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And every day they're waiting. I just, this is what I do, this is, helps me come to this table, to my desk every morning, to come and to sit and to dine with the Lord or have breakfast with the Lord. Not, I'm talking about spiritual breakfast, get some spiritual food. I envision him sitting here waiting for me. I envision the seat here and him sitting right there beside me. Like I've even got two chairs right there in my office and sometimes I'll do that. I like set a chair there and I'll envision him sitting there with me because the reality he is and he's waiting for me every day not like this like where is she but like come on girl come on baby girl I have something I want to feed you today I have something I want you to taste I want you to chew on this a little bit I, I got something good for you today come let's sit a while and like I said in this culture we don't want to sit some of you may not I, I, I talk to a lot of people who have never even had that family atmosphere of sitting around the table where you sit and you talk and you enjoy each other's company. And that's what Jesus is inviting us and in saying, would you sit with me for a while? Would you talk with me for a while? Can we munch on some things for a while and swallow? Can, can I give you some bread? The bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. Can I give you some living water so you'll never thirst again? Can I give you some good wine, the new wine of the Holy Spirit? Come, come. You know, he was always, I, I love, even after he returned to this earth in his resurrected body, we see that he was cooking fish on the shoreline, inviting the disciples to come and eat breakfast. Jesus was all about sitting and eating and talking. And I want to encourage you today to come and sit and eat with him. Maybe it's a real meal, like when, when you're having breakfast and you can just sit and, and in your head, I mean, you might not want to sit and talk with him like that. Someone might think you're crazy. Um, but in your head or in your journal, like start writing out your conversations with him. Share your heart. That's what the table's about. Like at night with my kids, I'm like, tell me about your day. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to hear about your day. He wants you to come to me, he says, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you some rest. Come sit at my table and rest for a while. And so back to my picture here, I, I got these seats here where this is your choice to come and to sit at the table and to enjoy the company of your heavenly father, of your brother Jesus, who is also the Lord and Savior, um, of your life in the Holy Spirit that gives you the revelation, gives you the understanding to understand what Father God and, and Jesus are, are telling you and give you the power to carry it out. And I drew here some of the things, I put bowls, and inside these bowls is what Jesus has dished out for us every single morning. You know, we we like to get something quick out of the vending machine, but if we were sit and sup with him, here's what's on the table. First of all, we got the Word of God that is going to be um, our food. 
It's going to nourish us. It's going to give us encouragement. Do you need encouragement and comfort today? Do you need answers? Answers are at the table. Do you need wisdom? Do you need power? You know, I have bowls here. Like, first I have the big, the big meat, which is you come to the table and you have forgiveness. You have grace. You have mercy. You have a right relationship with God. You have salvation. That's like, man, that's delicious. But you know what? There's so much more in these side dishes. Over here, you've got um, some weapons that he gives you. you got the word of God. You've got your faith. you got praise. You've got um, worship and prayer. You've also got an anointing and you've got power. You come to him. He's going to give you the strength that you need to carry out the assignment that he's given you. You've also got wisdom and discernment. God says, do you need wisdom? Come to me. And I'll give you the wisdom that you need. He also says, you know what? I've got some fruit for you. There is a whole bowl of fruit salad for you. And Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you come and you have that relationship with God, the fruits of the Spirit are he gives you joy. He gives you peace. He gives you comfort and gentleness and kindness and Gives you self-control. Do you need some self-control today? He also has patience and love and faithfulness. Like, are you needing someone to be faithful to you? It's all there at the table. And as you partake of him and as you draw closer and closer to him, what happens is you start producing that fruit and you start feeding other people some joy and some peace. People receive it when they're around you. They encounter the presence of God in you. And so I want to encourage you today to come to the table. I know you're going to be missing the table with the turkey and all of that. And I'm, I, I hate that. But God has a table that is prepared for you right now. And in Psalms 23, it says, in the presence of your enemies. Your one main enemy is Satan, who has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and the Lord, the word of God is saying in the presence of your enemy, there in that dark place of prison or in jail, or wherever you're watching this from, God is saying, oh, I got a table prepared for you. And he's got some dishes every single day, whoop, all ready to give you and to fill you up. He says, come taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, what keeps you from the table? Back to my beautiful drawing, and then I'm going to close with, with this question. What is keeping you coming and sitting at the table? Is it busyness? Is it excuses like we saw in Luke 14? Is it, um, are you tired? Are you weary? You're too tired to even get up and go to the table? What keeps you from having that time with God where you just sit and sup with Him and talk with Him? And, you know, there's so much there for you, including correction which is good for us, not condemnation, but correction and teachings. And he wants God, so much he wants to give us, but why don't we come? What's sitting? Is there something sitting in your chair that needs to get removed so that you can sit there? Something like maybe shame? Today, I shared this message with the guys in the jail, and one guy says, I, there's a sense of unworthiness sitting in my chair. I don't feel like I'm worthy to approach God's table. There's a sense of shame, one of them said, and guilt. One admitted there's distrust of God. One admitted that there's lots of doubt and confusion, unbelief. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's jealousy or envy, or you have just a spirit of complaint and ungratefulness or blame, this victim spirit. And it's, it's all just sitting there and it's piled up in there and it's, it's sitting there. And if guilt's sitting there, you can't pull up to the table. There's not room for you both. So Satan's putting those things there, having you carry them and lug them up to the table. And God's like, mm. kind of like, you know, <laughs> leave your guilt, wash your hands. I've already cleansed, cleansed you. Like leave it. Kind of like when I would sit with my kids, I'd say, okay, leave the toys over there. Leave the phones over there. We're just going to sit and eat and talk. 
And that's what he's saying. Leave your guilt over there. Tell me about your fears. Tell me what you feel ashamed about. And, and, and then he's going to give you the truth. Will you receive it? A lot of times we just want the salvation, but we there's so much more that he wants to give us. And I pray that in 2024 that we will go, oh, sorry, I just kicked you. We will go for the more. We will go for the more. I love y'all so much. And I just wanted to um, remind you that a table has been prepared for you. And God wants to serve you up every single day so that you are full, so that you can go out and you can feed others and you can serve others. He wants to give you the energy you need, the power you need, the strength you need. Everything you need is right there at the table. Come to the table. May I, may I pray for you as we close? Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for my, my friend here. I thank you for the one that is listening. Father, maybe their hearts are a little heavy this time of year. And they're missing uh, maybe their kids or their spouse or their, their mother or their father, or their siblings, God. They're missing being at church. They're missing being with their, their, um, their peers. And so, God, they're missing the traditions. And I just pray that right now that they will have a feast with you this holiday season, that they will come and they will sit and they will sup with you. They will listen. They will learn. They will celebrate. They will cry with you. They will laugh with you. Father, every single day, you invite us to come. There's room for the whosoever's. Father, if there is an unworthy person right now that feels so unworthy, that feels like you would never accept them, I just want to remind them what you said here in Luke 14. You said, go out and get the whosoever. There is room at my table. And there's room at the table right now for them. Father, we love you. And we just pray a blessing over their family and their loved ones this year. And we just pray for the Prince of Peace to dine with them, to comfort them, to encourage them, to strengthen them, to fill them up, to overflow. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. I love you so much, and I am so grateful to be on this journey and looking forward to seeing what God has for us in 2024. Have a great and Merry Christmas. God bless you. Thank you for watching our broadcast. Are you an incarcerated brother or sister who needs encouragement? Write to us at Victorious Living Correspondence, P.O. Box 2751, Greenville, North Carolina, 27836 or email us at hope at vlmag.org. To view Victorious Living Magazine in its entirety, please have your chaplain contact us at 352-478-2098 or email us through our website at vlmag.org. We are happy to provide our Victorious Living Magazine free of charge in bulk with or without staples.